Now let's bring in South Dakota Governor Christy Noem to assess the ongoing lies of the Biden administration, but not just South Dakota Governor, a very successful economy in South Dakota. Governor, you listen to Biden say everything's fine here. How about this idea that they spent $700 billion of taxpayer money for the Inflation Reduction Act, and now he's admitting it really didn't reduce inflation at all, and sorry he named it that. You know, it's interesting when you look at the spin that they constantly have going on with all the spending at the federal level. We've proven in South Dakota that conservative principles work. I think that's why this Democrat Party and Joe Biden are so scared of a little state like South Dakota, is because all we have done here the last several years is what conservatives say they believe we did it. And we have one of the best economies in the country. Incomes are going up here faster than anywhere else. We have the lowest unemployment rate in our nation's history right now in South Dakota. Everybody works. Our uh, mental health and suicide numbers are going down. Our drug overdoses are going down. People are happier. And that's what I think is so interesting about the contrast between what we're doing in South Dakota, what Joe Biden says, is that he has to spin his story. He has to lie to the American people to try to get reelected and stay in his position of power. Here in South Dakota, we just step back, let the people have personal responsibility and let the numbers speak for themselves and their better lives speak for themselves. It's a dangerous thing when you have a state like South Dakota out there for the Democratic Party. Yeah. We threaten everything that they do to grab control of people's lives. Yeah, they, they, that's it. You hit it. They love control. And look at the mm -hmm. control that they're putting. They just rattled off some numbers. $17.1 trillion in household debt, a record. $12 trillion in mortgage debt, a record. $1.6 mm -hmm. trillion in auto loans, another $1.6 in student loans. Here's the average American households, average $102,000 in debt. 37% of this country in America, households could not cover an unexpected $400 expense how is that a success? Why is he so happy about Bidenomics? Yeah, it's shocking to me, those numbers, because it shows you just how crippled the American family is right now. And, and Biden controls people uh, through fear and by having power over their monetary policy. And this is what concerns me, Eric, is that I feel like Americans right now aren't even necessarily willing to be inconvenienced or uncomfortable for a moment in time to start fixing this situation. Uh, this is our kids and grandkids that we're leaving this debt to. It keeps me up at night sometimes thinking about the situation that this country is in and the fact that we have leaders who will keep giving handouts in order to keep people under their control. And it needs to stop. I think we need to recognize people my age, uh, people that you know have kids and grandkids out there, we need to start telling the story of how important it is that, that people control their own money, that you don't have the government making all your decisions. Uh, what Joe Biden is doing by continuing this kind of spending is debt, is he's literally handing us over to countries like China. China uh, well, buys our debt. They don't just control our monetary policy and our food supply and threaten us militarily. They're controlling our debt and, and buying it as well, which at the end of the day will mean they end up owning us. Yeah, as, as rates go up, China gets paid by us a lot more. But I'm glad you said monetary policy. We have a little VO, it's called a VO, and we show Janet Yellen, our, our, our illustrious person who decides our monetary policy. Look at her bowing to the Chinese diplomat, bowing in China, in Beijing, to the Chinese diplomat. Re-rack re that and show that again, because I'm just blown away. It should be the other way around, Governor. It should be the Chinese bowing to Janet Yellen, because they're dictating global monetary policy, not us like we used to. Barack Obama. I'll give you one more piece of VO. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama bowing to Saudi sheiks. There he mm -hmm. is. Here we go. Here we go. Amer he said, Barack Obama says, we will fundamentally change America, and he was embarrassed for American exceptionalism. He started it, Janet Yellen. You, you put those two together, and boy, can you see where we're headed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the biggest threat we have is how weak we look on the world stage. Uh, the posture of this administration uh, by the Democrat Party has weakened us in a way that we're going to have to turn it around instantaneously when we get a president in the White House that really loves this country. Uh, by them continuing to weaken us by their posture of giving in to these countries that hate us, they're literally handing over our safety and security. So allowing them to, to dictate and become world powers is dangerous. And I listened to quite a few national security advisors, uh, folks that have worked in the Pentagon for decades that say they firmly believe that within the next 10 years, we could be at war. 
uh, that with China and with world power such as that because of the way that this administration has weakened America. Governor, um, turning the topic a little bit to the, the Trump indictments in, in Georgia, Hillary Clinton was on Rachel Maddow just after they, they dropped it. We'll show a little soundbite of how she reacted to, to another Trump indictment. Listen. Very fancy meeting you. Oh, I can't nice believe this. <laughs> yeah, this is not the circumstances in which I expected to be talking to you. Nor me, Rachel. It's always good to talk to you, but honestly, um, I didn't think that it would be under these circumstances. Yet another set of indictments. Oh, she's she's beaming. Mm. She's grinning ear to ear, Governor, about another Trump indictment. Your thoughts? No, she makes me sick. I mean, if you, what's happening right now in this country is a little literal breaking of America. And it's a breaking of America because they are proving to us that there is no equal protection under the law. There is no treating every citizen the same. They're using this as a weapon to destroy a political opponent and ignoring the violation of crimes that their own party and their own friends have committed. So um, to have someone that has had so much information recognizes the consequences of this type of an action to openly sit on national TV and laugh, that person doesn't love America. That person doesn't love our freedom, our republic, as it was created by our great founders. Um, yeah, she makes me sick in the fact that she is lightheartedly laughing at this breaking of our foundation and our constitutional rights. And Trump is literally being indicted for, for the same thing she's done over and over since 2016, mm -hmm. denying mm -hmm. that she lost the election. Governor, I sat down with Donald Trump last week, a wide-ranging interview, it went far and wide, a lot, of, a lot of sound bites were picked up. Your name came up. Let's take a listen. I saw Christy Noem, uh, who's terrific. She's done a fantastic job. I watched her this morning. She was on television. They asked her, are you going to run? Because there are other people running. Are you going to run? She said, no. Why aren't you going to run? Because nobody can beat Trump. She said it, which I greatly respect. I mean, she's saying, I hope the truth. She said, why would I run? Nobody's going to beat Trump. It's not even a contest. These people are just wasting their time. So, Governor, uh, are you going to run against them? Are you going to run with them? How does he react? No, I mean, I've, I've run a lot of campaigns. I run waste races that... I can win. I've always won every campaign I've gotten into. And right now, you look at this presidential race, there's no one who can beat President Trump. And when he was president and in the White House, he let me do my job as governor. And I was extre extremely grateful for that, that he let me do my job to take care of my people and use the authorities that I had and made sure that we had the tools and resources we needed. So what I had said about him is that you know, he clearly is uh, going to win the Republican nomination, that I support him uh, doing so. And I think that it's incredibly important that we continue to, to make sure we're telling the story and the difference between what the Republican Party stands for today and what the Democrat Party stands for. Uh, the extremism uh, of the Democratic Party is devastating and damaging. And, you know, President Trump says a lot of nice things about a lot of people. He also says some things about people he doesn't like. Well, I, I, haven't, I haven't heard him gush about anyone like that. I mean, it begs the question very quickly. I don't have a lot of time, but if he taps you as a, a vice president nominee, would you accept? Oh, we'll see. You know, he, if, he's got some options. So um, I'll just continue to focus on South Dakota and be here if, if people need me, um, you know, to, to help in any way that I can for this country. I get up every day just doing what I can and making sure that I'm, I'm taking care of the next generation. That's really what the story is about. Well, you're doing a great job. So we yeah. all thank you thank and you. you keep it up, uh, not only people in South Dakota, but the rest of the country as well. Governor Christy Nome, thank you for your time. We'll chat soon.